Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today I'm gonna to be doing an unboxing video for a new motherboard that some of you have suggested from the latest poll I put on the community page of the YouTube page. This is the Tough Gaming Asus Z790 Intel motherboard. And at first glance, the packaging it's pretty nice. It's got all the features on the front. It's, it's pretty heavy, I'll tell you, this is a heavy package and I'm interested to see what's inside here. LGA 1700 for the chip socket means this board's going to support Intel 12th and 13th gen chips, CPUs. And it says it has PCIe 5.0 support, uh, DDR5 motherboard, HDMI output, Wi-Fi 6E, has the Aura Sync and the RGB Gen 2. There's a QR code up here for ASUS. On the sides, just more of the motherboard package naming. And on the back, it gives a breakdown of all the ports and the features and functions. The DDR5 supports the AEMP2. Has a quick release slot Q for the PCI Express slot. And I wanna look at that because I think that's got a enhanced way you can pop the video card out because sometimes it, when everything's tight in there and there's the cooler, you can't get to it. You know, you gotta use like a little pencil or something. Uh, it's got the USB-C 20 gigabits per second port. It has four M2 slots. One of the main reasons I bought this, not only that, because but y'all recommended it. I'm gonna switch back over to Intel, uh, having problems with the uh, MSI board that I had for my uh, Ryzen 5900, but we'll get into that later. It's got, looks like it has an, a bunch of USB 3.2 USB ports for a high transfer speed. It's got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet card. It has a Z790 chipset. So without further ado, I'm going to open up this box and we'll see what is actually in here. That's it so. Standard packaging, cardboard. One here, what do we have here? This is the Wi-Fi. Asus Wi-Fi antenna right here. What else? Let's see. Wow, this board is heavy. Before I get into this, I'm feeling. Let's see what else is in the box. And what we have here, we have a small bag containing the NVMe uh, standoff for the board with one screw. Uh, that's kind of depressing because you would think that they would have more for this price board. So if there isn't any more, then you're going to have to buy some. And I know it's like a few cents for that screw, but if you're trying to attach it, set up your system, you don't have it. Well, how are you going to put in three if you have one? Here's some uh, NVMe pads. It's supposed to be stick this on the NVMe. And here's another pad. And they have two uh, cables for your SATA. And this is something you don't normally see because it's going away is usually online and digital. You have a full motherboard manual. This is pretty cool. And they give you some tough certificate from Asus, how it's been tested, etc. And then you've got some stickers, in case you're into that, if you wanna decorate your case. And then they have the, they have various languages for the power attachments. And that's it. Uh, let's look at this real quick. This board is particularly heavy, and I think that's due in part to the VRMs and the heat sinks. If you look here from first glance, those are pretty beefy heat sinks on the VRMs, right? And then you've got the tough Ultimate Force heat sink here. Now, on first glance, you'll see that there is the, what I was talking about previously, the easy disconnect. This is for your PCI Express graphics card, and it links the button over here to this. 
see how that is? If I press this button, it physically unlatches it so you can pop the card out so you don't have to get in here in a tight space and try to get your card unlatched. That's pretty nice. Here you have NVMe number one, number two, and then there's NVMe three and four under this heat sink as well. You remove those and put them in. And under the first NVMe heat sink, you'll see that you have some thermal tape here and a quick secure and release the first gen 4 NVMe slot and over here you find the same here for the NVMe they all have the quick connect release secure kind of like turn it and put it in place so you don't have to use an extra screw for that technically. It locks it in place with the turn. That's cool. They're doing away with those tiny screws that are almost impossible to see and use. They get lost just by like sneezing and they'll blow across the world. I like it. So you have one, two, three, four NVMe slots on this board. Of course we have four memory slots for DDR5. Dual eight pin power for your CPU connectors up here. 24 pin ATX, tons of headers for your fans and RGB headers, flip this around. There's a drawback that I see immediately for this board and that is only one, two, three, four SATA connectors. Now it may not be a big deal to some, but if you're, you know, normally you would see six on a board like this, but it does have four NVMe, so we'll give it that. And also to note this PCI Express slot is reinforced so you have more support for those heavier cards so less bending possibilities for that slot the back io and you see all the different 3.2 usb ports and there's a usb c as well and then your hdmi and then your display port out 2.5 gig nick here's your wi-fi connectors for your 6e Spit it out for your digital and your onboard audio. Take a quick look at the back. And just a standard, well, it's fairly bare, but that's fine. It means it's clean. And you have your CPU socket uh, back plate. It was either this board here or a Gigabyte 790. And I'm really partial to the Gigabyte boards, but read that they have coil wine issues and that has been a problem and I've seen other people. So I went with this upon the recommendation of a few different people on the channel. So we'll see how this works in an upcoming build. And this socket is namely, it looks a lot bigger because it is for the uh, 1700 LGA socket. It's to accommodate the larger Intel chips. So, and I'll show you from the ASUS site um, in depth of what this board has in case you're interested. 790 plus Wi-Fi, LGA 1700 for Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. It's got PCI 5.0 support for graphics. DDR5. Another thing to note is that the spacing for the board here, if you have a previous gen for a 1155 socket uh, for your cooler, those coolers are meant for a smaller socket displacement setup for the uh, holes for the board. You're gonna need an adapter, an adapter to make like your Noctua cooler work for this. So keep that in mind. You might have to buy an adapter for the larger backplate for these holes. So if you have this new LGA 1700 series board for the new Intel chipset for 12th and 13th gen chips, and you have an old Noctua 15S or etc., 
you're going to need a mounting bracket kit for your system. Uh, this is the NMIL7XXMP18 and it is $8 on Amazon shipped because the Noctua fan heatsink that I have is a really good one. It doesn't come with it. Back plate to mount to this board, it's too small. So when you open up the box, this is what it looks like. You have your screws, blue and silver, and you have your mounting back plate for this LGA 1700 and your mounting brackets here. That's what comes in this box for $8. It's, the, uh, it's got foam, it's packed well. And like I said previously, you can order one online through the forum for Noctua. Um, it will take up up to 20 days to ship. If you don't have time for that, or if you're outside of their shipping area, it'll cost you $6 and plus change. So for $8, why not buy just, just buy it on Amazon and you have it and you can do, do your build. So you need to know that for this particular new board series, the LGA 1700. That's my tip. Don't get left out in the cold with no cooler. So, and you won't be able to mount your system cooler. You just be waiting. $8 is worth it, the investment, since you already paid $100 for your cooler. I'll put a link for this board and also this kit, this conversion kit for LGA 1700 in the description below. Stay tuned for my eventual build with this, switching back over to an Intel system. Thanks for watching, remember this tech.